in prior to the webinar today that we will address. And then you can certainly give your questions during our webinar with the chat feature. And so if you go ahead and chat in your questions today, we'll, we'll get to those as our uh, time unfolds. So um, with that, um, I'll go ahead and, and open it up. Our format today will start, uh, give uh, the mayor and county executive both an opportunity just to give some updates from a county perspective and from a city perspective on uh, what is happening uh, from uh, both of their standpoints. So I'm not sure if which, either one of you want to go first. I guess we could start uh, with, with uh, the mayor. Sounds good. Well, thanks so much for having us for the second time for this Q&A session, really appreciate it. Uh, so thanks to the Chamber for hosting and to Josh for facilitating today's conversation. Uh, I'm sure there are gonna be a lot of questions. Well, I know there are based on you know what was submitted beforehand about uh, face coverings. So I think we'll cover that in the, in the Q&A. But in terms of other updates from the city's perspective, uh, you know we've been doing as much as we possibly can from the onset of the pandemic to support businesses and individuals understanding how difficult Things are, uh, especially for certain segments of the business community, as we continue to move forward through um, through the coronavirus pandemic. So we've been really focused on, uh, you know, just doing whatever we can to support business in the city of Green Bay. You know, it's it started with um, taking our liquor licenses down to the statutory minimum for those businesses that were impacted and had to shut down because of the coronavirus. We were uh, the first municipality in the state of Wisconsin to do that, uh, obviously a, a small thing for the businesses, uh, but you know, we identified that as, as something we could do to, to help them out. Um, so we're happy to do that in spite of the, the re significant revenue impact that it had on, the, on our budget. Um, some more recent changes though, uh, covered in the, in the Press Gazette, um, going back a couple weeks, uh, thanks to Alder Johnson and a number of other members of, of city council, we're able to authorize parklets in the city of Green Bay. So for those of you who are not familiar, it, it allows a business um, to essentially reserve a parking spot out in front of their establishment, um, set up additional dining so that, you know, there's greater capacity. I think we all know, we all understand that it's, it's safer to be outdoors when you're around other individuals uh, during these times. So we wanted to, um, you know, to help folks with that, allow them to have some additional space out in, out in front of their establishments. Uh, in addition, sort of related to that, we also move forward with, um, with an emergency ordinance that was ratified by council, which allows businesses to simply expand their premises. The liquor licenses, you know, typically um, only extend to, uh, you know, a limited footprint, uh, be it indoor space and a patio. We, we've allowed businesses to expand beyond that into their parking lots, um, other spaces that, that are accessible to them, including, um, for example, down on on the city deck in the example of Hagemeister Park, allowing um, you know, some, some space to be occupied there um, on the city deck, which is technically a park. Uh, another thing that we've done recently, um, also received some coverage is legalize what's called click and collect. So when um, you're going to a grocery store, having curbside delivery, which you know, many of us probably are, are these days to minimize the number of people that are in the stores, um, Previous to the law change that we made here, you weren't able to get um, alcohol, and um, and so we've we've enabled that for for safety reasons, also for sort of like modernization purposes. It's something that surrounding municipalities have had for some time, and, and felt like that was um, something we could move forward with. Uh, additionally, we've uh, been working with uh, downtown Green Bay, Jeff Mercus and his team, to set aside a few parking spots in the Adams Street lot. Uh, I think many of you, if, if you're still coming downtown, which hopefully you are, you've, you've probably noticed that uh, traffic isn't what it once was before the pandemic. A uh, number of parking spots are available in the Adams Street lot. So we've decided to, um, to mark some of them off and to set up some dining space for those businesses that, that might not have access to much in front of their business um, with the understanding that, um, again, this is it's a safe way to provide a dining um, and uh, entertaining option. So so hopefully we'll see some some good use there once that's up and running. Um, so that's what I have in terms of um, a little bit of a, a business update from the city side of things. If you have questions, always you know feel free to to reach out to us to my office um, online on the phone, um, whatever's easiest for you. Uh, and then we also have just a COVID nineteen page, a, a header right on the uh, the front page of our website, and and there you'll have um, you know for example the the new 
uh, ordinance that requires face coverings, all information related to that will be there, already is posted there, along with um, department uh, specific information about COVID-19. So for community and economic development, they've got a, a link there that you can click on and, and explore um, you know, some of those loan opportunities that are available to people um, that we've also established recently. So I'll, I've, I've said enough, I think I'll, I'll leave it there and kick things over to the county executive. And, and as I said, looking forward to the questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we did have a note that it was difficult to hear. One person said it was difficult to hear. So just uh, keep in mind, we'll uh, do our best to um, you know, speak into the microphone and stuff. Uh, but I only got that from one person. So I'll hand it over to County Executive Streckenbach for some updates from the uh, county perspective. Nope, and he actually uh, on mute, uh, Troy. All right, we're good. Thanks. All this by now because I've uh, we use it often. Um, so thank you, Josh. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for the chamber uh, for hosting this. Um, it's great to hear from the mayor and the things that are happening there. In terms of you know, it's really unique to see you know obviously outdoor dining spaces. We we're hearing more and more from. Uh, you know, people who understand this virus that, you know, being outdoors, uh, you know, the, the, the chances of getting the COVID are reduced uh, greatly. So uh, it's great to see that we are making efforts to allow for businesses to continue to operate uh, in a safe manner. Um, as you guys are probably aware, you know, this obviously has been going on since March um, in terms of, you know, government interaction and, and implementation. We, you know, obviously have um, went through the different phases. We are, from a from a county's perspective, working with the health department for all those businesses who have actually worked with our health department with the reopening plan, uh, the Brown County reopening plan that follows, you know, a lot of the recommendations that were given by WADC along with the CDC, and more importantly, for those who have taken advantage of that reopening plan, there is obviously a poster that you can. Uh, display at your entrances showcasing to the public that you know you are following the guidelines that have been issued by you know the the state and the federal government in terms of how to create safe spaces not only for your employees but also for the interactions of your customers so uh, we hope that uh, a lot of you are in you know in fact utilizing the recommendations in that plan and of course if you have any questions as a lot of you guys have seen, um, that our health department is extremely, um, excuse me, uh, helpful with uh, contacting, uh, contacting the businesses if you have questions on how to do it. Uh, I know that our, our our health department has even gone out to businesses to help you know see if their their plan is working or what they what they're implementing is uh, within the guidelines. So I would encourage all businesses to continue to do that, um, especially as we learn more and more about uh, how this uh, virus is, is, um, is contracted. Uh, I, I would say that, you know, for, in terms of the wearing the mask, uh, back in March when I stood in front of uh, the Sears parking lot asking for the state or the feds to get us testing, uh, I wore a mask then. Uh, we have been encouraging and uh, recommending people to wear masks in public, um, you know, since the beginning of all this, and that hasn't changed. Um, obviously, you saw that when we needed testing, that the governor, along with um, the National Guard, along with our healthcare providers, you know, Bellin, Prevail, Aurora, all stepped up to the plate. Uh, we were able to mobilize and erect uh, testing sites rapidly and we're able to get a, a really quick sample of how the public um you know what what was the uh how how many people within our community were infected at that time um that has since um moved now to the private side with the healthcare providers who have capacity to you know do testing in the community if it needs to eventually uh, re-ramp up we're all prepared to do that uh, and with with the partnership with DSC, the DHS and the National Guard from the state's perspective. Um, we did see, you know, one of those community assets, you know, oftentimes when we build these very large venues um, uh, to help promote the tourism, the economic development aspects of our communities, 
Uh, and of course, from Brown County's perspective, the city, municipalities, we also have some other things that we plan for uh, when it comes to how do we address these national and um, natural disasters or some type of pandemic or something that we need to have large spaces. Well, you know, the Rush Center, which was purchased and, uh, you know, built uh, with room tax dollars uh, primarily, we were actually able to use it for the purposes of uh, for the public, and that was the testing. Uh, we just recently used it uh, back uh, uh, this month, a couple of weeks ago, for an in-person county board meeting, uh, where we were able to actually have, uh, you know, a public meeting with the public showing up, but we did it in a manner that, you know, created a lot of space uh, between the supervisors and the public, and I would say that it, it went off pretty uh, successfully um, in terms of allowing us to do the people's business in public. Um, you know, moving on in terms of kind of stepping aside, because as the mayor mentioned, there will be, you know, we know that the questions today will probably be around the masking uh, discussion, but I wanted to assure you that the, the people's business, the county, we, we continue to operate as, as normal. Uh, we, our projects are on time. Uh, a lot of the, actually the projects are, um, you know, under budget and are being completed um, before uh, the timeline. Uh, so our road projects, a lot of those things are getting done. Uh, the, the, for those who drive by the Rush Expo, uh, that is on time. We still believe and hope that it'll be completed by uh, January 21. Big kudos out to, you know, PMI, Meyer Construction in terms of making sure that that project stays on, on task. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, amazingly, you know, when we're working with big infrastructure projects, the Southern Bridge, you know, uh, kudos out to both the Federal Highway Administration and the Wisconsin DOT. They, for the first time, held a public meeting uh, virtually. And uh, this is part of the criteria in order for us to be able to move through these processes. And the, the participation in these meetings were successful in terms of meeting the criteria. So that project continues to move forward. We're really hopeful that the record of decision in terms of the review will indicate that uh, the, the Southern Bridge and the interchange connector can happen. So these are all important things that haven't been put aside to manage the COVID crisis. Uh, and Brown County continues to make sure that we're getting the, the work done that's necessary for us as an, you know, a community to continue to operate course we have the seriousness of this COVID crisis that's in front of us and I think all of us as a community are trying to figure out how do we continue to have an economy operating uh, because that's quite frankly critical um, and at the same time manage this in a manner that keeps everyone safe and so I guess I'll, I'll turn it over back over to you Josh um, but just know everyone that was on the call Brown County is, is dedicated to making sure that one we are you know you know, doing as best as we can to make sure that businesses can reopen and operate safely. Uh, and at the same time, we are making sure that we continue to do the people's work. Thank you, County Executive. A reminder to everyone on, um, go ahead. If you had, do have questions, put those in the chat box and we will get to those uh, throughout our time today. So a reminder, uh, go ahead and put those in there. Um, we do have a few questions uh, right off the bat that relate to uh, face masks. And uh, first question is, will we see the Brown County and the city of Green Bay be consistent with the message and enforcement of, of policies or mandates with respect to face masks in public places or uh, businesses? Well, I guess I'll, I'll kind of start with, um, you know, Brown County will be taking up the issue uh, tonight, actually, um, and it'll be the first of the Health and Human Services Committee for their discussion. Um, and Supervisor Joan Bruski has brought forward a um, offered resolution uh, that I wouldn't say it's necessarily mirroring exactly what the City of Green Bay put forth, but it does definitely have enforcement aspects to it. Uh, we also have Supervisor Shadwell who brought forward uh, more of a, just a resolution that is uh, basically an advisory slash encouragement 
reinforcing the importance, but not necessarily in a, an enforcement standpoint. And so from that standpoint, we begin our journey uh, in this discussion uh, tonight. Yeah, and then from the city's perspective, I've said publicly on, on numerous occasions that, you know, from my point of view, I think <clears throat> it, we'd be best suited to have, uh, you know, a metro area policy, a countywide policy, but understand that it's it's not something where the county exec can wave a wand and, and make it happen. It's, it's not something where I, I can do that either when it comes to city business. Um, you know, I did use some emergency authority to sort of accelerate the discussion, but um, but our uh, face covering requirement needed to be adopted by our common council, which it was earlier this week. Um, and so, you know, just felt like we needed to, to act quickly to keep people safe in this community, um, hoping that the county board will, will follow suit. And, you know, it certainly doesn't have to be identical, right? You know, um, I, I said from the beginning that we prefer to have the county policy it's now sort of enshrined in our city ordinance that if a county ordinance moves forward, then ours would be uh, rescinded. Um, city of De Pere is going to be exploring it next week, I believe. Um, Oneida Nation has put in place a face covering requirement. So I think, you know, you're seeing some, some action there. Um, also heard from businesses that their preference would be to have a community-wide or county-wide ordinance. So, so that's certainly uh, my hope. Hey Josh, and I, I would I would just state that you know ever since all of this has began, uh, piecemeal patchwork, whether it was the stay-at-home uh, orders, uh, uh, as we saw that you know when the the governor's stay-at-home order was rescinded, uh, um, and then you saw just this. In the perfect world, you know there would be a, a, a more of a statewide approach to, the, to this whole issue, if not nationally. And uh, from that standpoint, it, it puts, you know, it puts uh, communities at odds because, you know, what's, what we've heard is that, you know, what's happening in Milwaukee, Madison, Green Bay is not happening up in Townsend or in Florence. Uh, and so treatment shouldn't be equal. Uh, but needless to say, I would say that it, it's, it is better to have a more um, county-wide or a, uh, you know, a statewide approach to these solutions because then it doesn't create uh, chaos or it doesn't confusion, um, uncertainty. These are all things that, you know, quite frankly, um, um, we, we should be doing as, as much as we possible to try to eliminate the uncertainty so that people know exactly how they can move about within the community. So in the end, I, I think that there is a lot of value in having a, uh, a more statewide, countywide type of approach to this versus having it piecemeal. But in the end, you know, uh, Brown County is represented by 26 different uh, supervisors who represent you know very different populations in terms of uh, density and so there there's going to be a difference of opinion when the the board ultimately takes this up and similar to the you know the mayor our legislative body is the one that has the authority to put any uh, ordinance in place thanks so much uh, the next question relates to the face covering uh, 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 ordinance um, as, as it relates to the time frame of that. Um, can you speak a little bit, Mr. Mayor, on, on when that is scheduled to, to end? And maybe from a county perspective, what the timing on that might look like as well? Yeah, so it's, it's slated to begin on Monday the 27th. So there's a bit of, a bit of lag time so people can prepare for it. Um, as far as uh, how long it will continue, it's tied to our emergency declaration at the local level. So as long as city council uh, and our administration believe that, uh, that we're still in the midst of an emergency, a health emergency, then this, this face covering requirement would continue on. Um, and so we're working on creating some gating criteria uh, that will help guide us in determining whether or not we, we still need to be in a state of emergency. Um, just to reiterate the county executive's 
point, you know, we did have some of that gating criteria that was at the state level. Um, when that fell away, um, whatever side of the, you know that question you were on, it certainly just you know created a, a lot of uncertainty and uh, and differences in uh, in policies across the state of Wisconsin. So I think we're all trying to struggling to to put the the pieces back together to create our own uh, metrics and, and help guide us through um, through that decision making process. Thanks, uh, Troy. Do you want to comment at all on on uh, on that question, or move on? Well, I, I guess you know, because we don't have an actual order in place at this point, it's it's difficult to say. I think most people would say we'd love to have it ended tomorrow, um, and 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 that business is back to is back to normal. I you know, from our perspective, you know, obviously uh, the mention what the and the mayor mentioned there are certain uh, gating type of things that will be indicators. Where is our hospitalization rate? What's the ICU? What's the positive case rate? Uh, you know, what's what are the medical professionals saying at this point in time in terms of the the transmission? You know, we we are hearing that you know outdoors uh, you have a less chance of getting it versus being confined within a space for 15 minutes. So you know when that information comes out more strong in terms of how the, the transmission of this disease uh, impacts people, that gives, you know, a lot of, it gives us better data to be able to make decisions. So quite frankly, I don't have a concrete answer other than, you know, we're, we're all hopeful that, you know, we get this under control. We all, I mean, from, from the county's perspective and recognizing how important it is for you know kids to be back in school. That's you know this is going to be critical for families and you know and uh, parents to be able to manage this um, and making sure that we have equity in our learning. So getting kids back into school uh, full time is going to be critical. And is this one of those things that school district and superintendents are using in terms of their gating? Um, so I think this is all kind of plays together in terms of long term strategy. But to answer your question. I don't, I don't know the answer as to at this point when, when the board would put something in, you know, the CDC has come out and said, put something in effect for four to six weeks. And that could potentially, uh, you know, put this thing under control. So maybe the board says we're going to try all this for four to six weeks and, and see what happens. Um, that could very well be the case as well. Thank you both for, uh, for your insights on that. The next question uh, relates to some more of the specifics related to the face covering uh, requirements, uh, asking about what control do businesses have over their own environment, uh, employee movements, um, employees having to wear masks at, at desks, uh, offices or, or working at desks or areas um, at work that allow for social distancing. Can, um, I'm, I'm assuming this uh, is more directed to Mr. Uh, Mayor, uh, can you talk a little bit more about the specifics of um, the face max requirement and, and uh, how businesses um, and what control businesses have of their their own environment? Yeah, so the uh, as I said, the language is available on our website under the COVID nineteen heading. Um, so everybody should feel free to to visit and and you can read through some of that language on your own. But just broadly speaking, the you know the purpose of the ordinance uh, is, is really to apply to publicly accessible areas in indoor spaces. So private work environments really aren't impacted here. Now I will say just, you know, based on the literature that I've read, paying attention to what the CDC says, people should, should be masked up when they're working in an office environment. Just my perspective, that's what we've been doing here at City Hall since May 11th. We've required people to have masks on when working indoors with, uh, with other employees. So that is absolutely the best practice. Uh, unfortunately, the office environment is probably one of the best environments to spread the illness. Um, so people should be very cautious. I would, I would just recommend uh, if, if you're congregating a number of people inside, but this ordinance really doesn't apply um, to those, those, spaces that, those spaces that are not, I think the language is customarily available to the public. I should say it only applies to those spaces that are customarily available to the public. 
Sure. Thank you uh, for that. Um, the, the next question that, that we've got relates to that. Questions about the, um, the ordinance as it relates to protection against businesses that maybe a competitor would um, uh, create a, a false report. Um, are there any protections in place uh, for, I guess, uh, abuse of, of this, uh, of the system here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially concerning business. So the, you know, there, there is language in the ordinance that says the city could take administrative action to, um, to remove a licensure that's granted by the city to a particular business if they are violating this ordinance. So just so people understand <clears throat> the way that that would work um, hypothetically is that you know, the administration would make that determination, but then it would have to go through a committee, it would have to go through our council, and then it would have to be signed by me, that action. So, so those are the, you know, it's, it's a pretty rigorous process. And I just want to make the point here that I've made previously, which is that we're not interested in penalizing anybody. You know, our expectation with all of our ordinances is that they'll be followed. This is a very legal, uh, you know, law abiding community. And, and that's our assumption for this ordinance as well. We're not going to be, um, you know, sending our police out to, to try to enforce this ordinance and, and we're absolutely not calling on citizens to um, you know to be spying on their friends and neighbors and businesses that's not at all what we want to see here our assumption is that people are going to abide by the law um, and that's the way that we're going to operate thank you those are actually the uh, the questions that we've got so far um, and so um, this looks like we got one that just popped in here. A couple more that, that just popped in. So give me one second here to uh, take a peek at these. Um, uh, one question uh, asks, many European countries, Germany, France, Denmark, Norway, et cetera, have reopened their public schools. Um, what is the, 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 your opinion on Brown County schools uh, this fall? Any thoughts on that? I'll let you take that one, Troy. Uh, I, as I stated earlier, I mean, our you know our hope is that schools are open, uh, it, and that's you know more my, my personal opinion. I, I wouldn't say that this is uh, Brown County's you know Brown County Board of Supervisors haven't taken a position on that, but uh, you know I I think our we recognize that students in a in a learning environment in classroom have a better chance of, of learning. Um, we know that they're just from our human services, you know, side of, of our departments, we know that there are a lot of children in our community that really rely heavily on having those eight hours at school and having the meals and having a safe environment. Um, we know that we have a lot of children who rely heavily on the, the teaching aspect because of, you know, uh, challenges with the, the home, the parents may not have the capability of teaching the child. Um, and so for a lot of reasons, the in-person schooling is critical for, I think, our children of, of Brown County, um, and quite frankly, the mental health state of our children. Uh, that in social interaction is critical. Um, and so it was, it was great to see WIA uh, made the decision that they were going to continue to have fall sports, uh, uh, you know, going forward. So that was, that was a promising uh, storyline. And I think, you know, from, from the purpose that, you know, the city took its actions and I think the county's discussing it, uh, really reinforces the importance that right now, nobody has the magical answer in terms of how we get this coronavirus under control. Uh, we do, we do know that right now it, uh, it, it negatively impacts people of a certain age with certain medical conditions. Uh, there's a lot of different opinions about the, the science and so forth and so on. But I think, you know, the, you know, as you heard the mayor talk, I think he's appealing to people's just good nature about let's try to do the right thing. Let's try to figure out how we make sure our kids are able to go to school. Let's try to make sure that our businesses continue to operate. And one thing that we are trying to figure out is 
Other masking can help reduce the amount of cases and hopefully not see our you know, hospitals, you know, with uh, increased um, hospitalization rates or ICUs. So from that standpoint, um, I think one of the indicators that superintendents and school boards are going to be looking at, because they not only have the children that they have to be concerned about, but they also have their teachers uh, and the faculty that, uh, and the, the, the administration that they'd be concerned about. Um, hopefully that, you know, these numbers are in a way that they feel confident uh, that their, their children can go back to school and that everybody can be safe. Yeah, I would agree with the, just about everything that the county executive said there. Um, I, I would also say, though, that, you know, the countries that were listed uh, in the question, um, I think objectively have, have gotten on top of this illness much more effectively than the United States has, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, we're not in the process right now of flattening the curve in Green Bay and Brown County and the state of Wisconsin and the United States. And so, you know, we really need to get serious about the virus by wearing masks, by continuing to wash hands, the physical distancing, um, not touching the, you know, the eyes and the face and um, the contact tracing, the testing. Yeah, that, <laughs> I didn't say that because you adjusted your glasses, Troy. Thanks. But, um, <laughs> you know, the, the contact tracing, the, the testing that, you know, all that is really essential um, to, you know, to really bringing the fight to COVID-19. And, and um, that's what we need to be focused on. You know, if we want Packer games back, we want Badger games back, we want concerts, we want our kids in schools, uh, we got to see our numbers go down. So I, I totally agree that, you know, we want kids in our schools, in person, uh, learning, you know, well with their teachers and with their fellow students. Um, but we're not in a great place right now, unfortunately. And I just would reinforce one of Troy's last points, which is teachers, right? I mean, there are a, a good number of our teachers who are 60 years plus paraprofessionals who are in that, that demographic as well. And, and we know, um, you know, that you're more vulnerable to this virus the, the older you are and um, the, the, the more comorbidities that, that you might have. So we need to be really sensitive, I think, to not just our our kids and our students, but also the, the educational workforce that will be impacted by these decisions. In the and short term, to, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I don't know, that's okay. I just, you know, just to make a jurisdictional point, like the you know, county executive and, and mayor, you know, we don't make those policies. Those are decisions that are made by our individual school districts with school boards and, and superintendents. So they're all, I know, talking frequently and in the process of making those decisions. Thanks for those thoughts. Uh, in the short term, it seems like economic development is, is going strong. And uh, what are your thoughts on how the pandemic will impact um, economic development long term uh, and the developments in your areas? Um, have you seen a decline in the discussion around future developments? Yeah, so I mean, we've, we've seen things continue to move forward with our community and economic development department. People pulling currents, you know, pretty much every day. Um, doing work around Greater Green Bay, which is, I think is a, is a really good thing. Uh, but the county executive and I have had some conversations and, and we'll be having some more with, with, uh, with the chamber very soon next week, um, talking about strategic plan and um, sort of factoring in what, what COVID-19 has revealed, I guess, um, some trends that might have been accelerated as a result of of the illness. Um, so one thing that we're seeing play out in Green Bay and across the country and the world, um, I think is, you know, people kind of pulling back from the work environment, a lot more work being done from home. Uh, we saw the decision to, to shut down and um, WPS headquarters in downtown Green Bay, uh, which is unfortunate to see, but I think is also a, a great development opportunity for us so we'll be working with, um, with the county and with WPS and other partners to see what we can do on, on that particular topic. Uh, but you know, also trying to figure out how, uh, how this could be of benefit to Greater Green Bay, how we can make Green Bay you know, a community of choice for someone who is very mobile 
now, given the fact that, uh, that it's easy and proven to be pretty effective and productive for people to work from home. So you look at, you know, the cost of living in greater Green Bay compared to Chicago, to, you know, San Francisco, to Manhattan. I mean, it's, it's striking the difference, right? So businesses, employers, um, you know, could certainly pay people significantly less while at the same time, employees could see their dollars go much farther if they were to live in a community like Green Bay versus one of the coasts or a larger community like the Twin Cities or Chicago. So, um, so those are some of the long-term conversations that I think are just starting. And I think it's important for us to all be engaged in them. Yeah, I would say that, you know, I'm one of those believers that where there's, where there's, um, you know, a problem, there's an opportunity. So typically try to try to tackle things um, in a more optimistic and opportunist kind of way. Um, I would say that right now for all indicators, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think most of us, if we're driving around, we're seeing construction is well underway. There's, you know, a lot of developments taking place. And so that's, that's promising, you know, the question of how long or is this short term? You know, I think that really plays out to be in what happens in the economy. Um, and how long does this thing last? What happens in our national elections? Uh, but for all intents and purposes, some of our largest employers seem to be extremely busy. Uh, you know, we're seeing continuously positive news coming out from, uh, you know, the increased investment by our, our employers. You know, Green Bay Packaging is well underway with their their project, Green uh, Georgia Pacific, uh, in their investments. Uh, you know, so these are these are some large employers who um, employ a lot of people here. There's, you know, I, I grabbed this because I, uh, I printed it off a while back, but, uh, and I kind of referenced it, and the mayor mentioned the opportunity with the Green Bay Strategic Plan, which, you know, outlines 11 different areas, um, and I think a lot of those are critical. So you look at infrastructure, you look at tourism, you look at uh, the inclusivity, the diversity, a lot of these things that we as a community are collectively working on, and kudos to uh, the Green Bay Chamber and the um, economic development aspect of the chamber really pushing the community to get on track on these things. But there's an opportunity for us to look at some other things. And the, the mayor highlighted that, uh, highlighted that, you know, could we become that community of choice uh, for people who want to work uh, remotely? Um, you know, right now, Brown County has 700 employees working at home. Yet we're not missing a beat. And that is becoming a reality. And Brown County is, you know, working with the city and our municipalities have put together this thing called BCAN, uh, where we're, we're laying more and more fiber into the ground uh, to really make sure that we can compete um, from, a, from a global standpoint. But Oliver Buki put together this article that was in the business news back on April 20th of 2020. I would strongly suggest you guys going back and finding that article and reading it. He puts out there, you know, a three-step process in order for us to become the region, uh, you know, work home, work from home capital, and it really highlights, you know, education, technology, um, and and diversity in terms of things that we need to, you know, tackle as terms of the community. But I think we have all the right recipes, you know, in terms of quality of life, uh, cost of living, to really become that place. Um, you know, with the engineering school, the STEM Innovation Center, uh, engineering, if any of you guys are followers of, you know, what's happening from a technology standpoint, engineering is going to be critical. And we luckily now have a school of engineering right here in our backyard. Uh, I think we can really press upon that to become the choice of development um, and uh, workforce development. And so I think that's going to be something that a lot of us the business community, government should all be on the same page in terms of a strategy and working together to create that environment and continue that uh, investment. Thank you both for those responses. Um, do either one of you see a second quarantine potentially happening? Um, 
<laughs> you know, in the state of Wisconsin, I mentioned the Supreme Court decision that led to the demise of the statewide safer at home order. Um, so being that as it may, you know, having any kind of a, a statewide quarantine is sort of out of the question. Uh, um, you know, how that could play out at the, at the national level, I guess, is an open question how that could play out at the local level, you know, county by county, um, municipality by municipality, depending upon whether or not uh, these places have health officers. We do not in the city of Green Bay, the public health department of county is, is really the governing entity when it comes to, to public health. So that's where, you know, that could potentially come from. It, there's just so much uncertainty. And I know it's, it's really hard for us all to live that, um, but just know that we're all in that same boat. You know, that there are so many open questions. And, uh, I wish we had that, that crystal ball. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the health experts believe that when more people, you know, come, come back inside, if you will, after the summer leading into the, the fall and winter, there's definitely more of a risk of the illness spreading more rapidly. Um, but it's, from my point of view anyway, it's, it's just really hard to say. Any, uh, any follow up on that, Troy? Yeah, Josh, I, I'm sorry, I, for whatever reasons, I didn't, I, what was the question? Yep, no problem. The question was, uh, uh, do you see a second quarantine potentially oh, okay. happening? So I think the mayor, you know, obviously the legislature made it in the Supreme Court made it clear. So if there's gonna be another quarantine on a, on a, on a countywide, statewide basis, it's gonna come from, from the, from the state. Um, and that would be an act through the legislature and the governor's office. Uh, in, in terms of local wise, you know, we, you know, if we find, so if our public health department finds uh, an area or a business or an individual, uh, they do have the power and the authority to, re, uh, to, you know, to force a quarantine of an individual or business. Now with, you know, there's some legal stuff in there, there's court orders, there's a process that, uh, that has to be followed in terms of that happening. Uh, but, you know, as of right now, that, that hasn't happened. Uh, luckily, with when our health department's making contacts with, with both businesses and individuals, people have taken the necessary steps to try to, you know, fix the problem. Great. Uh, we had another comment. It's not really a question. It just is a comment related to the uh, WPS spot being a potentially good option uh, for a central library or a museum campus with a uh, maker space. So I'll let you both lock that away um, for future reference. Those are actually all the questions that uh, we've got so far. So with that, I will just hand it over back to, to both of both of you, Mr. Mayor and uh, County Executive, any um, final thoughts you'd like to share with our uh, participants today in closing? Why don't you go ahead? Either, either one of you go uh, ahead. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll go, I guess. Uh, you know, from, from Northeast Wisconsin, obviously, and from the county and the city and the various municipalities, you know, I, I think we've seen, uh, you know, what, what I think we all for in terms of um, how we approach and react to the situation. Um, I, you know, being raised uh, a Catholic and under the guise of, you know, the golden rule, uh, you know, do on to others, which we want done unto ourselves. And, uh, you know, I, I firmly believe that our community has done a, an amazing job in terms of uh, you know, reacting and, and taking care of this. We obviously have uh, not won this battle yet in terms of, of, of its prevalence in our community. Uh, and there's still a lot of unknowns in terms of how uh, we, can, we can ultimately um, get back to our normal life that we were so accustomed to, you know, not even a year ago, but back in February, beginning part of March. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm really pleased with the way the public has managed this in terms of the overall response. Of course, we have, you know, different variables that are, you know, being taken into account in terms of management of it. But overall, I think people's sense of their, you know, good nature and their humanitarian aspect, I think is, 
is is happening. I know that you know you when listening to the city debate, uh, you know, in, in their discussion, they they mentioned they were receiving roughly anywhere between four and five hundred calls. I think up to right now, Brown County, between the county board's office and my office, we're up to about nine hundred communications, a little over nine hundred. Uh, and overwhelmingly, um, you know, it's people who are interested in seeing the, the face mask um, uh, order be put in place. So it'll be interesting to see how the board debates this. Um, they ultimately, like the state and the legislature, they have control over this. It'll be interesting to see how they manage this, this um, going forward. Um, but, you know, pleased to see with what we saw with businesses and the, the reaction, you know, if, you know, I, a lot of us, you know, are on Facebook. We've seen where, you know, one of the businesses have found that they had an individual within their their organization that has tested positive, and they took the liberty to shut down and take the measures to, you know, make sure that their employees and their customers can stay. Um, and so it's 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 rewarding when you see businesses taking that that necessary step. Uh, it's also rewarding to see a number of the businesses who opted to say, you know what. Uh, we know it's your choice to whether or not you want to, you know, patronize us, but we are requiring you to have a face mask uh, in order to come in and do business with us. And so from that standpoint, I, I would say that, you know, as a community, we're doing a lot of great things. Uh, you saw that a lot of the different organizations, such as the Chamber, working with some of the private sector businesses, uh, WDC, um, you know, just a whole host of different organizations bring together, you know, grants, making those available to small businesses. Again, you know, if this thing continues and businesses cannot get back up and running uh, in, in full speed, uh, there is gonna be a lot of, um, of empty uh, space uh, in, in storefronts. Um, and that's, that's really concerning in terms of mental health, suicide rates, uh, just our overall economy to be able to operate. Uh, and it's really important for us to get back up and running. So, you know, if in the end, if Brown County does not ultimately put in a mandate or an order of some sort, uh, we, you will definitely hear from us continuously state the importance of wearing a face mask uh, when out in public and, and, and exercising that, um, you know, protecting others um, when, when out in public. So. Um, stay safe, be strong. Thanks, County Executive. I have one follow-up question for you. Um, it's, uh, it's, I guess it's my question. Can you just quick uh, um, recap the channels from a county perspective that a uh, face mask ordinance or mandate would go through? I know you mentioned taking that up tonight. What would be the channels that that goes through and, and a potential time, time frame on that from a county perspective? So uh, as depending on what the recommendation in, uh, that comes out of the Human Services Committee meeting this evening, uh, it would then um, uh, dictate what happens at the next county board meeting. And there could be a special meeting called by the county board and there is some discussion around that to have something next week. Uh, and it really kind of depends on whether or not the county board ultimately makes that decision. But right now you have the committee that's overlooking it. They have some proposals uh, that they're gonna be debating and then it would go to the full county board for approval. Thank you for that, uh, that information, I appreciate August, it. August, as of right now, if they don't do anything in terms of moving that up or having a special meeting, it would be August 19th. August, thank you. I will give uh, the mayor the, the uh, final word, um, any closing comments. Yeah, thanks again, Josh, for facilitating. Thanks to the chamber for hosting and, and everybody for attending. Uh, the questions that were submitted, I think, were really thoughtful and uh, inspired some, um, some good conversation, hopefully. Um, you know, just reiterate what the county executive said in terms of the quality of this community and the resilience of the people that, that live here. Um, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of inspiring moments, I think, some really difficult ones as well. Um, but, uh, but on the whole, I think it, it's, it's given us even more faith in the strength of this community. Um, I would just say that, you know, this, this illness has, I think, affected everyone, all communities, um, all countries across the globe, but it's also played out very inequitably. Um, you know, there are certainly segments, as I said, of the economy that have been 
uh, much more negatively impacted uh, hospitality industry, for example, the bars and the restaurants and tourism focused uh, industries. And, and of course, all of the employees who are associated with those, those employers. Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind. If, if you're doing well, if you're still employed, um, you, you know, you're getting that, that regular income, you know, just look for opportunities to, to give back. I know that's what, what all the people on this call always, always do, but now more than ever, I think it's just important to, to recognize that, um, that some people are really, really hurting and, uh, we just need to do whatever we can to pull together and get through it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, County Executive. And uh, as a chamber, we want to continue to, to be a resource and connect our businesses um, uh, with resources. So really appreciate everybody being on today. And um, again, continue to visit our, our website. And I know um, the mayor mentioned their website as well for, for resources and reach out to the chamber or uh, your, your uh, local municipality or county for, for further uh, insights and resources. So with that, I hope everybody has a, a fantastic day. Again, thanks for the time and I uh, hope everybody uh, stays safe. Thanks so much.